Vintagesuperleague.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Vintage Super League. Luis Scott Vargas here with uh, Eric Froelich. Uh, so you had a match there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a match of what? I'm not sure, but uh, it was something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when uh, when you played turn one Trinisphere, Ley Lion, I was like, well, that's game. But uh, yeah. cue to seven turns later, you had not played any spells. Yeah, I had 10 to 12 draws to hit like 30 or so cards that could lock the game up. But I did not do that. Needed him to lose a mana crit flip or just not draw perfects. Um, yeah. Any of that combination. So, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. I, I've gotten some uh, pretty bad luck in, in VSL before, so no big deal. I'm also 0 for 2 at hitting a playable card off a time twister. So when my opponents have cast it and passed the turn with, with my shops deck, uh, when I cast time twister against you, it, it didn't go quite as well. You cast, like, three lock pieces, but uh, so far I haven't <laughs> drawn any spells off those. So... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I built a deck to basically be all in at beating Storm. Um, then I played against three Storm opponents, playing a deck with four Null Rods, eight Spheres, Trinisphere, Chalice of the Void, just every possible card you could have against Storm. And, uh, you know, I had a good opening hand. Like, I had to mulligan multiple times, but I found Workshop Leyline Trinisphere. Like, can't ask for more. I got to scry to the bottom and, and basically got, you know, 12 looks. If I, if I see just a Null Rod at any point, the game's over. But, uh,. Yeah, it wasn't there. I couldn't find a threat. Needed him to lose the mana crit flip or uh, not draw lands or not draw, like, three rituals. But, yeah, yeah. what you going to do? Yeah, uh, you, you know, one of the things that uh, I was talking with Tom about when we were watching uh, Rich kind of demolish Chris in the, uh, in the or sorry, not Chris, uh, Kai in the opposite of it, in this exact matchup was that Storm and Shop seem like they're well ahead of everything else right now. Oh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, when you when you have a meta game of you know, rock, other rock, and a bunch <laughs> of uh, scissors, art and scissors, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, it creates an interesting field. Uh, yeah, I said the same thing beforehand. Like, I mean, Storm is, is incredible. Workshops is great. All the other decks are ranging between like fine and fun to just garbage. Um, I think that. You know, there, there's a lot of good things that these blue decks can do that mentor decks can do. They just fight very poorly against the two decks that are by far the best deck. And so, like, you could metagame your mentor deck dramatically to try to beat one of them, which is something that both Bob and Tom have done in different directions and then kind of got punished in both <laughs> yeah. cases, where Bob's is very metagamed against Storm and Tom's is very metagamed against Shops, and then they just are playing against the opposite. <laughs> and that's one of the problems I, when you're playing against I think it's giant great. shoulders I'm, and a bunch of scissors. Yeah, you know, this is exactly what I said to Tom is like you can take a mentor deck and you can basically build your main deck and sideboard to try to beat one of these two matchups to get to like around 50 50 against that matchup and then you're a huge dog to win the other one. <laughs> yeah. So, like Tom didn't get to play against any of the shops decks, but he, he doesn't even know if he's a good matchup. Just, no, that, that's it, part of the other problem. You can metagame heavily against them, but. All you've done at that point is upgrade your kindergarten scissors to like adult scissors, which we don't know if that's still going to cut through rock at that point. Yeah, I so it, you know it, it's tough. Uh, we'll we'll see what people bring for the for the last trimester here. Uh, hopefully, it'll be shaken up a bit. We'll we'll see if you can predict the field. Can you end up? Uh, can you end up getting an advantage there? And I think there's still there's still room for that. But yeah, it, things got out of control. One thing that we do have the option of doing at some point down the line is instituting our own ban list. I mean, we're not playing, uh, you know, sanctioned magic. And if we're going to, you know, influence decisions down the road, potentially influ having our own ban list is, is not completely unreasonable to at least discuss at some point in the future. Right now, there's enough variety. But, you know, if you're coming to win, you're probably going to play one of the two really good decks and not one of the... Uh, Less good decks, or 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 you'll have spine of your saw in your deck. <laughs> but uh, look, we we had reasons. Reasons. So, uh, <laughs> may have gotten uh, not the luckiest in that match, but I did get mail, and so that means I'm still lucky. From Wormwood Gaming, I got a nice uh, box here that I get to open up. Everyone else has already got to do it. I haven't even got to see mine. I can't remember exactly which one I chose, but I know it was nice. Do you have a way to, imp to an implement of some kind to open it with, or no? I have a shotgun <laughs> to try to one-up your butcher's knife, but I also just have incredible strength. I can tear through tape, 
with my incredible pencils. <laughs> and so I'm using those. Instead Come on, of it's a butcher's a it's a, it's... size of a small child that shouldn't be in the house of a home where there's about to be a baby. So, anyway, it's it's it's, it's either a trusty machete or a butcher's cleaver. <laughs> At least you have a knife to either protect a baby or cut one in half, which whatever uh, the, cir the circumstance calls for. So, got a nice box here. Wow. All right. So we got ourselves some English witch elm burl. This is pretty incredible. But those are just all words I don't know. <laughs> burl. It's like burly. I guess you oh, okay. that. You're a civilized scholar, not a homicidal brute, but uh, yeah, you can check that out. That is pretty insane. Um, I've seen a couple of these boxes before. I'm not, I, I haven't endorsed very many products in my life, and I've never endorsed anything that I don't use in, in any capacity. Like, the only website I talk about is Channel Fireball. I think it's run by the best people. It, it's fantastic. I, I love everything about it and the tournaments they run. Podcasts, LR, CR, of course, I'm a part of, and, and Magic the Amateuring podcasts I listen to. I think they're great. And there haven't been a lot of products that I've used a lot of. Like, I, I have, um, a wooden box that I received as a present. It was a fantastic gift. I then forwarded it to some of my closest friends, Luis being one of them. And uh, I thought that box was really cool. But uh, but this thing is pretty fantastic. This is you know the highest level wood. I've seen some reviews of it uh, over at the Tolarian Academy, seeing the stuff that it can do. And it's just, it's amazing. I, I'm going to be using this box. I will be promoting it. I, I think it's fantastic. And uh, I actually got a sneak peek. Uh, my fiance, Elantra, got her box in the mail. Her deck's already in it, so this thing is is very heavy. But uh, this one's Bolivian Rosewood, which is just, I don't know. It, it's a close call between which one I like the best, between uh, my Elm and this Bolivian Rosewood, but this is hers. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. It already has the Tron deck ready to go. <laughs> well, uh, why, why not the Bloom deck? <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> oh. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, those are the boxes. I highly encourage people, like, I understand it's kind of a niche market. If you're looking for a good deck box, you're not going to get a better deck box. There is a kickback to VSL for using the code, but, of course, it gives you a deal as well. I'm going to be using this at events, so if you would like to check it out, you can come to my matches, and uh, I'll be featuring it there. But, yeah, I think that this product is, a, is a, definitely a fantastic one and one that I'm happy to endorse. And it sounds like... Uh the players are ready, so we're going to head down to our match. Alrighty, we've got Randy playing Belcher against Steve Menendian playing uh, the Lone Delver holdout this session. And Steve's on the play here, which is pretty big, because Belcher is another really, really fast deck. It sacrifices a little bit of consistency of Storm for the fact that it kills probably about a half a turn faster on average. So yeah. we've got uh -huh. Ran Ran Randy on the draw here with a great draw, but Steve's draw counters Randy's quite nicely. Yeah, Delver is, uh, well, based on our, our pregame chatter, it, it's underpowered a little bit, but it still has a ton of great cards. It has a potential fast clock, and... You know, permission can just get there. Mental misstep is still a really good card uh, against decks that aren't shops, which is one of the tough spots when we were talking about the blue decks not being as well positioned. The fact that mental misstep is either your best card or your unplayable card, um, flusterstorm in a similar spot, cards like that, it really puts the blue decks in a bit of a tough spot because you you want to load up on these great cards, but at the same time there, there's an entire segment of you know one A and one B of the best deck where it's just unplayable. And that's just not the, not the best spot to be in. You know, De Delver dominated uh, season one because Treasure Cruise was was legal for the latter half of the season, and yeah, maybe Delver's an underdog now. But the cert this hand certainly isn't. I think Steve's a big favorite in this in this particular game, just based on the fact that Randy's going to have to show Steve his hand to use Land Grant because that's part of the ability. Plus the two, the Land Grant can can get Living Wish, but uh, Steve can counter. All the one drops in, in with the knowledge from Langer, and he can aim his force of will in the right direction. Yeah, um, the Belcher deck's pretty all in. Uh, I'm, uh, I don't like it. I can just say that. I guess pretty flat out. I mean, I know you and I have talked about it before. Um, the Belcher deck, where uh, we've seen the Storm deck and its resiliency in 
you know, just watching Kai's match last week where you get something countered, you get something countered, you get something countered, and you still just win the game. Like, the things that they can do are pretty amazing, and um, you, you don't have the same options as Silly Belcher. If you're going to play against, let's say, a workshop deck and they get out some lock pieces, you just don't have mana. There, there just aren't lands. Like, we just saw in the last match, Ochoa was able to build up several lands into play so that he's able to cast his, his big spells and get out from under the lock. Belcher can't do that, so it, it's definitely more all in. It, it's a little bit faster, but I think it loses a ton of consistency. Um, I think cards like Living Wish are just kind of bad magic cards. I understand their purpose and giving yourself more academies, which is awesome. I mean, a two-man academy is a good card, but Living Wish is a bad card in my opinion. And so having to play cards like that to make your deck work, it's just a tough spot to be in. Yeah, I like the, the, the version that Chris Pakula played a couple seasons ago with Expedition Map. Yes. The way I see it is Living Wish is worse against Shops and Storm. Than the expedition map is because it gets duressed more easily against storm and it gets locked out more easily against shops. So Ra Randy baited with the ponder, which was good. But he was pretty happy when it got misstepped. Langrant and then just his ancestral also gets misstepped. Yeah, um, not really sure where you go from here. Well, St if Steve I'm gonna doesn't look have a living wish targets. If Steve doesn't have a threat pretty quickly here, then things aren't actually that bad because Randy's on two mana. And he's got Belcher, uh, Key, and Living Wish. Langrat was about the worst draw, though, because that card literally <laughs> does nothing. Yeah, it, but it says basically, nothing. Basically, Steve is going to, what he's going to do is he's going to go look at the deck list to see what uh, Randy can, can Living Wish for here, as we all do exactly that. Exactly what uh, I'm <laughs> doing. The, the options are Tolarian Academy, Reclamation Sage, Mishra's Workshop, Kadolta Forge Master. That's it. All right, well, in that case... I would be inclined where I steve to just let it resolve, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, Randy can get a workshop, which is actually... Yeah, maybe not. Maybe... Because Steve knows about the key the and hand. the... Yeah. All right, yeah. so he's going to go Academy. That works very similarly. I guess he can cast key, so that'll be an accelerant. Um, love the spot Steve's in here. He's going to get to cast Gush on his turn, try to find a threat. And if if, if does, Steve drew a Pyromancer first, it would be really, really good for him, but... Yeah. Still, he or gets to cast Gush. Yeah. I mean, just nice. But. Enough, uh... He, Steve's got enough mana here. He knows he's going to have to force Belcher next turn, which is unfortunate, but one of the advantages of Gush is you might Gush into, like, a weaker blue spell so you can keep a force wall here. Right. I like Gushing main phase, though. You, use up, you, you lose so much mana if you don't. All right, that's a reasonable. Uh, Fluster Storm actually not amazing here, although uh, it can be pitched to Force of Will if he wants to. He knows yeah. he knows one of the two cards. He does not know the land ramp. Um, of course, it's the worst card Randy could draw. <laughs> not close. Yeah, Randy got a little unlucky there. So if you're Steve, you, you, you can. Yeah, I think you have to play Delver. Even even though you've got double forces in your hand, I would like to have more pressure here. Looks like Steve's going to keep Delver to pitch to Force of Will. Yeah, I actually don't mind that. Wow, <laughs> that's funny. You have to laugh at that. Come on. Hey, I mean, it, at this point, Land Grant is like drawing uh, excess expedition maps in the uh, other version of the I mean, deck. He so. literally just drew a reverse two Uno card in his vintage deck at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, he did. <laughs> Green one sorcery. That's it. There's no test. <laughs> no, search well, you, you could you, you can play it for free. Like, Randy, if he draws Brainstorm and Brainstorm's back uh, a card... Actually, Brainstorm Randy's not... Brainstorm into a three-mana perfect Brainstorm. Right. Randy's not playing Brainstorm. Really? I what? guess the idea is you don't have fetch lands, you just have land grants, and you probably cast your land grant first. So Ponder and Preordain are just better. That's interesting. I don't know that I agree with that entirely, but just it's interesting that... better it, doesn't mean that Brainstorm isn't good, though. Right. So Ra Randy has to be suspicious. Steve... Gushed and then passed with now six cards in hand. He knows two of them, I guess. So four unknowns. You can't be super happy about just running out of Belcher, but it's not like Randy has a counterspell. He's got Pact Negation in his deck, but even if he drew... I guess if he draws Pact and Belcher resolves, he can then Belch on upkeep. So maybe he's hoping to draw Pact. The Lane Grant... I mean, it's, it's real bad. It's not even a blue card he can pitch the Force of Will. Um, Expedition Map, at least at this point, is a Mock Sapphire. Sure. You know, it works for Academy. <laughs> Grant is uh, something else. He could cast it for free. It's kind of nice. Agreed. So, Randy, 
this is Randy's, I think, biggest decision so far this game. Like, he, like playing the Ponder first was, I think, just good magic and mm-hmm. casting the, the Living Wish. So I like Randy just running out Belcher here. Like, yeah, you, you kind of expect it to get countered, but this just sets you up better if you draw another Belcher next turn. If you draw one next turn, you'll have been happier that you did this. We have definitely had a, a week of some of the unluckiest things I've seen. And drawing Langrant Langrant is uh, pretty high up there. He only had two more Langrants in his deck. He's playing three, not four. So, Steve with a very good draw here, preordain because you know Steve. Steve actually, despite being a Belcher deck, has some haymakers in his deck. He's got an ancient grudge he can find that wow. would be amazing right now. Yeah. It would reduce Randy to one mana. Uh, he has a strip mine which would kill the academy, would, which would also you would be very good. Have the ancient grudge, would you? Even if you could, uh, you probably just kill the mocks. I, I, I assume. Yeah, that's what I do. What do you think about the decision to pitch Delver over Flusterstone? I think if you didn't cast it last turn, you should pitch Delver. Like, you're not, you're, you're already kind of locking yourself in there to a slower clock and just trying to go for, presumably just like a Pyromancer to kill in, a, in the shortest number of turns. Well, Flusterstorm got a lot worse in the face of Grim Monolith. Flusterstorm was already pretty bad against Randy's deck. Most of his threats don't get countered by it. Like, the True, best use of Flusterstorm. It does counter the Pact of Negation. You're right, is the, exactly, the follow-up pack. This is a very good draw for Steve. This is exactly what he's looking for, because now he can go Pyromancer... And immediately preordain. What? Whoa. Hmm. I don't understand this. Yeah. Unless he knows his top card, he guess he can't, because even if he left two on top, this would be his second one. Yeah, I don't. Hmm. I mean, unless he figures the token's not going to matter much, it, but yeah, that doesn't make any sense to him. All right, he All found right. a blue card, so that's great. Um, he lost an, a 1 1. But uh, probably yeah. not going to matter. It's unlikely. His hand is very good. Randy is on you know three air balls. Um, yeah, it might it might end up being like a one or two turn difference in clock. Yeah, which is huge because Randy, if Randy finds two threats, he's in business. Like, well, uh, well, <laughs> not now. But <laughs> the thing is, the flusterstone doesn't counter much. So if Randy's able to find something like Tezzeret, which of course Steve is going to be forced to force a will, then a card like Time Vault will win the game, or you know, a Belcher, or... You know, I, I, I have played against Steve a, a number of times in this league when he's playing this deck. He hates playing threats. <laughs> he, 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 he has, against me, literally discarded Delvers rather than play them, so it, it, this might be in line with his philosophy here. He's getting punished by not casting the dig immediately as Force of Will can get hard cast. Um, and and Randy has more than enough to pay for Flusterstorm. So if you're Randy, you snap off Force of Will here. Yep. So, uh, definitely I think I missed that there. What kind? Mental. Actually, probably just technical, but... <laughs> so if you're Steve, do you do you force this back? No chance. You, dig is just worse than a force of bullet plus a blue card, right? Yes. So... And I kind of expect Steve to do to, to play it that way. Like Steve, th- that also lines up with uh, how I've seen him play c- control. Wow. Oh, no, t- That's so a good t- one. Do you play the Delver first? Then that's actually the question here. Because if you time if you're walk, Steve, hit- no. But well, like you're time walking, hitting Randy to fifteen, the next turn attacking to eleven, seven. If you flip Delver. Then it adds t- turns to your clock. I don't know. I, I would be tempted to play Delver here. Flusterstorm's already... You just have to assume it's dead. You're just going to pitch it to Force of Will. Yeah, absolutely. So if uh, Steve can flip this Delver, which means he draws a spell, I mean, all the locks yeah. things up. It's already close to locked up. The Force of Will is so good with Randy's hand being, you know, the, the, the two cards from uh, a Pokemon deck. Well, Delver flipped into a mental misstep. Yeah. Yep, that's a good one. So, I guess the clock is actually... He, he does need another turn because of that lack of token. <laughs> I don't think it matters. It's funny because if Randy plays a spell, then Steve wins immediately. So, if Randy draws a threat, is he supposed to run Steve out? Is going to win anyway, so... Well, what if Randy drew, like, packed and then Steve bricked? That, that could be a thing. It could. All right, so... Steve smashing. What what do those things look like post board? Steve gets 
Not as much as he would hope for. One copy of Ancient Grudge, one copy of Stony Silence, one copy of Nature's Claim, one Pyroblast. Randy's got a City of Solitude. Yeah. That's good. It's really more on Steve to, to sideboard than Randy. Like, Randy's deck doesn't sideboard, you know, all that many cards and kind of already has its main deck cards in its sideboard, like Pact of Negation, for example. Right. Or rather, it's sideboard cards in its main deck. Uh, like, Randy Randy is going to side in the City of Solitude. I don't really know if he sides in anything else. He could... No, you can't really side in a land. that does, or A defense grid, I guess. He's going to side in defense grid and in City of Solitude. Yeah. Um, Steve's got some bad ones. Uh, Swords of Plowshare is kind of at a, an all-time low in vintage right now. It's it's really good against Lodestone Golem if you're able to get there, but... So we, I expect Steve to board out as many threats as he can. We know he hates to cast them. And so Delver and a young Pyro. I actually, oh, he also gets all the ingot chewers. I actually love Steve's sideboard plan uh, against combo, where he's sideboarded against like Oath. He's just like sideboarded out all his mentors and just gone to win off of uh, just you know the, the worst creatures imaginable because he just has all counter stones. I think that's pretty sweet. Is he playing mentor? Not in this particular case. Sorry, when he was playing Mentor before. He played like Jeskai Mentor, and I remember him signing out all his Mentors against uh, one of the combo decks. I think it was Belcher, actually. Oh, Steve actually has a Mind Break shot. That's pretty nice. Yeah. He's got a Mystical Tutor, too, which means he, he kind of has three Ancient Grudges. Because one of the one yeah. of the features of the Belcher deck is when it goes for the, like, around turn two kill, it often ends up with just a Belcher in play and, and hopes to untap. Steve has a lot of defense against that. Steve has, like, eight ways to kill artifacts. Yeah, but the Belcher deck doesn't necessarily have to go for it that quickly against a deck like Steve's, especially as he's boarded out all the threats that he has. So, uh, a little bit more protection. Let's see. Randy Does Steve Randy. have a mental misstep hiding there? That's just going to be this whole game right there. Whoop, yeah. there we are. Cause, because Randy's hand is... I would imagine a keep. He gets to go turn one. That's a promo Chrome Mox, imprint Preordain, cast Ancestral, and try to go from there. The problem mm -hmm. is it's going to get mental misstepped, and then Steve's going to ingot it, and Randy's just going to have no mana. Yeah. If that's mm -hmm. the case, do you keep if you're Randy? I think so. I don't know. I don't know that you can mulligan this. Yeah, it feels like you have to keep... Um... Because it's not like the Belcher deck mulligans particularly well. It's got cards like Chrome Mox and Mox Opal, which mm -hmm. tend to get a lot worse post mulligans. Right. Yeah, it feels like if if you know your opponent has Mental Misstep, you would want to mulligan this hand. Although Mental Misstep is going to be good against a lot of your hands. Mental Misstep's amazing against the deck anyway. It's mm -hmm. yeah. So you just have to keep that hand and cross your fingers. They don't have Misstep. You're in business. I mean, if you can find any mana source your Mox Opals on. Might be able to go nuts. Mana Vault, Grim Monolith. You, you could actually have a lot of mana. <laughs> Randy could also just cast the Mana Vault to try to bait out Mental Misstep. That's probably a better line, actually, because it lets Mox Opal be alive. If you're Steve, you would mess up the... I mean, it ends up kind of the same spot except Randy has an Ancestral in hand, which is better. Because if you're Steve, I would imagine you Mental Misstep this. It seems really? very dangerous. Did get in hand? The problem is if you don't misstep this and then Randy goes... I guess Mox Belcher you can still beat. Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe you let this happen. I think I let this happen. I don't know how... It, it, this is one of those weird spots where I don't know how jaded my opinion is based on seeing the hands. Because I, my experience against Belcher is obviously not extensive. So if you can see the hand, it, it's obviously very easy. You don't misstep this. Um, and, I, and I felt that way that I would not misstep this with this hand. But that could I could just be too influenced. Well, Steve looks like he is going to miss step, and this actually going to work out. It still out. works out incredibly well. You still get to ingot to the Chrome Mox, and they're down to no mana. Yeah, I th and then that you have Ancient Grudge, which really locks the game up if you can slow it down a little bit. Right now, at this point, if Ancestral resolves, I mean that's worst case scenario for you, but it's not necessarily just lights out. So R Randy's best draw step right now is Land Grant. Is what? L Land Grant, I would assume. I mean, maybe Black Lotus is better, but... Yeah, I mean, Land, Land, Land like Grant's Mox pretty great. great. Like an artifact to turn on Mox Opal, make it a little easier. Or do, like, diminishing returns would be really good here. <laughs> maybe yeah, I'll this, this, this Belcher deck is uh, something. <laughs> <laughs> it's got one or two bricks. <laughs> that it, is it. The, I mean, the deck has had a very good record in the BSL so far, but the way it's I, played out these last couple games has not... Like, it's been stopped by a, not a lot of disruption. 
Yeah. When I when I first saw the Belcher list, I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. I don't love it. It it seems too fragile. I mean, if you're going to play against shops, especially with four chows in the void, that's a nightmare. But against anything oh, else, it's it, pretty cool. In, in a it world did get a big win without the chalices. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I thought the changes that Chris Pakula made to the deck last, I guess it was technically season two, were fantastic. And I thought, like, Candelabra was very good. A lot of the, the mediocre cards came out. There was more of the more expensive cards, like Diminishing Returns, which I think was an excellent addition. I, I thought the things he did to the deck were really, really strong. I still didn't love the deck, but I, I thought it moved dramatically in the right direction from being a deck that I thought was just kind of bad to a deck that I was like, oh, all right, this, this deck has real potential. Um, so it look, looks I, like Steve's I, discarding really a land, by the way, to brain to his. Well, he's putting it back with brainstorm and then shuffling. So Steve's plan is presumably get Tropical Island and then float mana gush, then play Dak Vaden. Oh, he's going to Mystical Tutor for maybe an Ancestral Recall. He's not very close to Treasure Cruising quite yet. An Ancestral for just Force of Will, which gives him access to it with Gush. Yeah, he actually. There's a pretty good chance Steve does that. Never mind. He's going to see so many cards off Dak Vaden and Gush. And note that he kept the nature's claim, I think because he's aware of uh, City of Solitude. It wasn't ancestral. It wasn't ancestral. Uh, I didn't realize what phase we were in. I thought that because Randy had nothing in play, I thought we were in Steve's turn. No, no that was end of turn. It so makes a Steve's lot more sense to get ancestral in that case, although I'd be, still be tempted to get a counter. Yikes. <laughs> All right. I, I think I still like getting out Dak Fade, and you only see one card less than ancestral, but the problem is if you ancestral here, you're just like so many turns away from casting Dak. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I think that th this is kind of the perfect example of why we, I would have gotten forcible. Because even if I, right. you know, I, I wouldn't even want to cast Ancestor right now. Right. There's but a lot. Said, you could just brick on blue card. You get four hit, four draws at a blue card, but it's no guarantee. All right, so Steve's just looking for Ancestral. Right. What's that? Um. Drawing Black Lotus. Black Lotus, well, it doesn't actually turn on the Opals, because you can't have both in play at the same time, because they're yeah, legendary. Yeah, it turns on the Ancestral, which gives you a yeah. uh, else to turn on. I think, if, I think if Randy draws a, a, you know, a, a blue source here, then he, he might be back in it. And he can actually look and see that he's got a one-turn window before Steve has Pyroblast up. If Randy doesn't Ancestral this turn and Steve untaps and has Pyroblast up, I think Randy's in a huge amount of trouble. Would Honestly, even if that? Randy... <laughs> well... Uh, it, it, Steve's going to untap it and have a red. Have a red. But. Yeah, I'm saying, like you said, if, if Randy draws a blue source, he's back in it. Well, how. You think he's actually in it, or he's just not completely dead? Well, I mean, if he gets to just draw three more cards, he's got, he, he, it opens up a lot of possibilities. Whereas, where he, where he is right now, because right now Randy's multiple cards away from assembling something, but mm -hmm. Ancestral sees multiple cards, and Randy's deck is very explosive. <laughs> <laughs> the sixth sweat, a second pro. <laughs> Basically, Randy's got a small window here, and there's a, a five-drop clunker, in, 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 you know, occupying it. Basically, Steve had, you know, shields down for a second. Now, now Randy has no forces, no mana sources, can cast one spell, which Steve can easily counter, and that's if he draws one of his, you know, few blue, few primary blue sources. Because one of the things that the, the the pilots of the Belcher deck always talk about is that the first challenge is making generating the first mana. The deck has you know cards like Grim Monolith and Mox Opal that do great at generating your third through fifth mana, but your first two are, are, are a little more difficult. A lot of bricks, but still don't think we're in a point where it matters. Uh, it's just see so many cards. Steve's drawing his whole deck. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's a lot of cards. Can he win before it decks itself? I think so, yes. What, we, he, he can let Randy resolve a Belcher and then Pyroblast to take it after ultimating Dak and then start activating Belcher and hope to hit Volcanic every time. Yeah, but he doesn't have. He might not have <laughs> enough cards left in his deck. <laughs> oh, he Steve. can let him get Tezzeret and somehow, I guess Pyroblast kills it. Pakul is actually uh, offering his skepticism on the green version as well. And as someone who's piloted the deck, I will... Assume he, he has, you know, a lot, a lot more experience. Yeah, if, if I was going to trust anyone's opinion on on uh, Belcher, Pakula would be really, really high on the list. Especially, like I said, I, I thought that his innovations since, you know, the last time he played it were fantastic. 
and the results were, were certainly there. Um, it, it was a good metagame for the deck, of course. I, I don't know how much that's the case right now, well, I, but I do I, think I, the green cards I, are just bad. I do like... I do like the the Belcher deck in a in a field of like mid range blue decks. I think it, I've played against the Belcher and it's very scary there. Like the deck the deck has some really threatening openings and it can go off with pack negation backup and whatnot. But uh, against against a field of like shops and like six duress storm, it seems it seems like it's going to be a little difficult. Though Belcher, I don't know how badly it does against storm. If Belcher's on the play, it can just goldfish storm. I don't know how fast the goldfish is when you've added a bunch of like you know green cards to your deck. Yes, Living Wish does not. I, I I assume doesn't increase your goldfish speed. Though expansion map honestly doesn't do that badly either. So I, I think that's There's not. There's so many ways to get to like two colorless mana to sack map to get academy, which is just game, as opposed to like getting well, to green mana. Which uh, is uh, one, of the, one of the things Kai pointed out that's like the the biggest difference. The the map version just has academy in your deck. You can start with academy in your opening hand. Yes. <laughs> but that, that, that is broken. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Randy chose to discard Mox Opal instead of play it because I assume he didn't want it to get stolen by Dak, though Steve's not super close to getting that active either. Yeah. Uh, he could basically only get it active through more Daks, I assume, at this point. Um, he's got three Moxes. Steve came gunning for shops, by the way. Look at look at his sideboard. He, he has a Nature's Claim, two Ancient Grudge, four Ingot Chewer. At post board, which is all that that's a lot. That's a lot of ammunition. And a stony silence. And a stony silence. And two dark fade in the main. Wow, stony silence, yes. If if Steve draws stony silence, then I don't believe Randy has a sequence of draws that can let him cast much. Still one with Tezzeret. I don't know how he gets to five mana. <laughs> well, if Steve if Randy can get to two mana, he can go like oh no, his academy is gonna sideboard. I was gonna say if Randy can if Randy can draw Academy plus Trop Cloud plus Zero Drops, that'll let him Living Wish for Rex Sage. But I guess Randy's had enough. He just knows it's it's, it's over. Yeah. Uh, I, I've had nightmares about potentially losing to this Belcher deck. I'm playing a deck that... And you're playing it next week, right? Insane against it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the sequences of things I feel like have to happen for me to lose are, are pretty astronomical and at the same time... Uh, terrified. Oh, you're, you're, you're drawing dead. Just, uh, I'm just calling oh, yeah. it. Yeah, I'm already told it. <laughs> Dude, I'm just, just going to use the entire week to warm up. I'm just going to get like, I'm just going to pour salt on myself all day, every day. And yeah, just just be prepared. I'm going to eat a lot of salty foods and uh, just see if it makes me explode. Alrighty, well, uh, that concludes uh, our round four match. We've got what I su can only assume is the main event coming up. Um, <laughs> myself against the great one, Bob Maher, and uh, well, we'll see so how this goes. Built as two guys who are pretty old. We're about to have a bunch of kids who are mediocre at magic that, that some people enjoy watching. Um, yep, we're here for the entertainment value. Let, let, let's see if my spine of Ishosh shopstick can do something. We'll, we'll, we'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs>